Track Shaker. We're gonna show you how to get your car on track. Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video today. We are Track Shaker, a group of enthusiasts that love to drive our cars fast on track, and we want to help you get on track too. This video is going to be your complete step-by-step -step guide to track days that shows you everything you need to know to get out there and drive your car on a racetrack this weekend. We'll walk you through what you need to know about track days, how to find and prepare for high-performance driving events, and what to expect at your first track event. Getting on track is easier than you think. So if you've ever wanted to drive on a racetrack, or even if you just like going fast, this is gonna be a great place to start. So what is a track day? Track days or high performance driver education events are one of the easiest, most affordable, and most enjoyable ways to get into high performance driving. Track days or HPDE events are non-competitive driving events hosted at road courses and racetracks throughout the country. You can drive your car on the same racetracks that the legends race on. From the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to Laguna Seca to Circuit of the Americas, there are track days happening at an awesome road course near you. You can drive your car on track as long as it is in safe, mechanically sound condition and you have a valid driver's license. Whether it's a 1968 Porsche, or a 94 Miata, or a 2016 Challenger, if your car is in good condition, you can take it to the track, even if it's completely stock. These events give you the opportunity to safely drive your car full out. Track days also help you improve your driving skill on a racetrack without having to worry about getting a speeding ticket or the su substantial dangers of pushing the limits of your car on the street. When you drive your car on a track day, you're in the optimal environment to go fast, and you're going to experience the incredible thrill and adrenaline rush of real speed. Across the country, there are thousands of track days and HPDE events happening throughout the year, and they are presented by a wide variety of organizations. Two of the biggest are the Sports Car Club of America and the National Auto Sport Association. There are tons of opportunities to get on track, and it is very likely that there is a track day happening on a course near you very soon. Now let's walk through everything you need to know to find, prepare, and participate in your first track day. So how do you find track events happening near you? And where do you get the information and tools you need to get on track? For the first time ever, there is a one-stop shop that gives you all of the details you need to know and allows you to get the tools you need to participate in track days in one all-encompassing website. That is trackshaker.com. When you go to trackshaker.com and click get on track, you'll see this video. And right below it in step one, you'll see our event finder tool. Simply enter your zip code and you'll be directed to the closest tracks near you. And you'll see a list of various events occurring at those tracks. Click on an event to find out more information such as cost and schedule. Track days range in price depending on track time, location, and other factors. Generally, a full track day will cost you between $150 and $300 and you'll get one to three hours of time on track spread out over several sessions. Some track organizations require you to pay a small membership fee, while others, such as SCCA Track Night in America, do not. You'll see that there are different run groups from novice to advanced. Even if you think you're a great driver, if you've never driven full out on a road course before, definitely register as a novice. One of the best parts of doing a track day as a novice is that you'll very likely be able to get live, in-car instruction by an experienced driving instructor riding with you on track. These seasoned drivers will provide you with an incredible wealth of information and help you get substantially faster in just one day. 
Most track organizations require an instructor to ride with novices for at least the first few sessions. Your coaching by a driving instructor is often included in your registration fee, so you'll get hours of instruction by a skilled driving expert for no additional charge. Even if there is a fee for driving instruction, it is usually small and is absolutely worth it. Your instructor will show you how to be faster and safer in no time. In the list of track events happening near you on the event finder on trackshaker.com, you'll see that some events have TrackShaker discount codes that allow you to save money on your event registration. After you've registered for your event, you'll be able to see your driver's packet on the event website or you'll receive it in your registration email. This helpful information will include the event schedule, driver rules, tech inspection sheet, and more. So print it out as you'll need it later. Head back to trackshaker.com and print the course map for the racetrack you'll be driving on. It will be very helpful to have with you at your track day. Next, let's talk about insurance. Your regular insurance does not protect you or your car when you are on a racetrack. When you drive your car on a track, you are 100% responsible for any damage that occurs to your car and any damage you inflict on another car or the track itself. Fortunately, there are several insurance providers that have track day insurance policies that protect you and your car when you are driving on track. Some of these policies are agreed value policies and you can expect to pay around one half to 1% of the car's value for your track day policy. For example, your day policy for a $20,000 car may be around $150. Track day insurance is completely optional. You don't have to buy it. However, I always get it because accidents do happen on track and you don't want to be stuck paying for everything out of pocket if you total your car at a track day. That peace of mind is well worth the cost and on trackshaker.com you'll see multiple track day insurance providers that will cover you. We also have TrackShaker promo codes that give you discounts to make your track day insurance policy even more affordable. Now that you've registered for your track day and you've got your insurance, let's talk about how you can get ready for your day on track. How do you get ready to run your car on a racetrack? The most important step in preparing your car for a track day is making sure your car is in well-maintained, safe working order so you can trust your car to keep you safe for a full day of high-performance driving. Your car will have to pass a technical inspection in order to be allowed on track. When you register for your event, you should receive the tech inspection sheet that lists everything that will be checked by the event tech inspector at the track the morning of your event. Some track organizations require you to have an inspection done by a certified mechanic prior to the event. Plan on taking your car to a mechanic that you trust or one shown on a list of recommended shops sent to you by the track organization to have your car inspected within a few weeks of the event. Give the technician the tech sheet so they can look over all areas of the car specified on the form. They'll inspect areas such as brake pad depth, condition of rotors, fluid levels, and more. Once they deem that the vehicle has no issues, they'll sign your tech sheet. Do not lose your tech inspection sheet because you will give your signed sheet to the event organizers at the registration the morning of your event. If you have a convertible, check the roll bar requirements listed on the tech sheet. All track day organizations require some form of roll bar for convertibles. Some organizations don't require you to have your car inspected by a certified technician, but trust you to inspect your car yourself. Even if the event host doesn't require you to, it's a very good idea to have your car looked over by a professional before your track day to ensure that you can safely push your car hard. Pushing the limits of your vehicle harder than you ever have before on a track is going to be very demanding. You want to make sure that you have fairly new brake pads, that your tires are in great condition with plenty of tread, that you've had an oil change and new brake fluid added recently, and overall that your car is mechanically sound to endure the high performance strain. The last thing you want to worry about is your brakes failing on track. So get your car inspected so you can depend on it performing optimally and you'll be able to go even faster.
So what should you bring with you to your track day? The day before your event, you should load up your car with everything that you're going to need at the track. On TrackShaker.com, you can print out a comprehensive what to bring list. Your must-have track essentials start with a well-fitting Snell rated helmet. You can't bring just any helmet to a track day. It must have a certain safety rating, and by far the most common helmet certification required by track organizations is a Snell SA rating. During tech inspections, the event hosts are going to look in your helmet for the Snell certification sticker. So make sure whatever you buy bears the proper safety specs. Full face helmets are ideal. You can get high quality Snell rated helmets on TrackShaker.com. They're more affordable than you think and they'll allow you to participate in any track day for years to come. Other items that are a must have part of your trackside essentials kit are a torque wrench, a tire pressure gauge, and a portable tire inflator. These are going to be vital tools that you'll use on your car at the track. You can get all of these tools and your helmet quickly and easily on trackshaker.com. Some other things that you'll need to bring with you are a socket for your wheel lugs and any wheel lock keys if you have wheel locks. With as much high RPM driving as you'll be doing on the track and potentially having a fair distance of travel to and from the track, your car may use a good amount of fluids. It's a good idea to bring some extra motor oil, engine coolant, and brake fluid with you to the track day. What should you wear to your track day? Check the driver's rules given to you in your driver's packet for anything on mandatory attire. Closed toed shoes are always required and typically long sleeves and long pants are required when driving on the track. Before your event, check the weather forecast to see what to expect from your track day. You're going to be running at high speeds with your windows down on the track. It'll be very windy in your car and you'll want to be comfortable in whatever temperature you'll experience. We've got a variety of track shaker apparel available on our website so you can be comfortable and look good on the track. Some other things that will be helpful to bring with you are a folding chair, plenty of drinking water, sunscreen, sunglasses, racing numbers or painters tape in a contrasting color to your car, window cleaner and a rag, and snacks or cash for food. Optionally, you can bring temporary paint protection film or painters tape to protect sections of your car that may be prone to getting rock chips or rubber marks from the track. We have helpful links to things such as track wraps or magnetic and vinyl racing numbers on our website. Check out our full what to bring list on trackshaker.com for some other optional items that you may want to have such as racing gloves and helmet supports. And don't forget your important paperwork. Bring your signed tech inspection sheet and print out your track day insurance policy documents as well as your course map. Finally, before you head off to hit the racetrack, it's a great idea to search YouTube for some in-car videos of great drivers going around the track you're about to drive on. This will give you a mental image of the track before you even get there. Now it's time for what you've been waiting for, the track day. It's the big day, time for you to get out there and drive your car on track. As you head to the racetrack, it's a good idea to top off your gas at a station close by. Gas is usually available at the track, but expect it to be expensive there. Depending on your car, it's entirely possible to burn a quarter tank of gas in just one 20 or 30 minute track session. As you pull into the entrance to the track, you'll stop at the gate, sign a safety waiver, they'll give you your first wristband. Find an open spot in the paddock to park your car. As a courtesy, park far enough away from any neighboring cars so that both vehicles can have their doors fully open without hitting each other. Now you want to unload everything from your car, and this means everything. You need to take out anything you have in the trunk, glove box, center console, and anything loose in the cabin, like garage door openers, toll transponders, and even floor mats. 
You don't want any loose items in the car with you as they can become projectiles in the event of a crash. Also, removing unnecessary items like the spare tire will make your car lighter and faster. Grab your torque wrench and check all of your wheel lugs to the appropriate spec. They will check how tight your wheel lugs are in tech inspection. Take out your tire pressure gauge and see how much air is in your tires before your first session. Once you meet your driving instructor, you can ask them for advice on adjusting your tire pressures. You'll likely want to take a few PSI out of your tires initially, as the pressures will go up as much as 5 to 10 PSI as the tires get hot on track. It's a good idea to check your driver's seat position and make sure you have full contact with the steering wheel and can reach the full range of all of the pedals. A rule of thumb is that you should be able to rest your wrists on the top of the steering wheel with your back straight against the seat back. If you bought race numbers, affix them to both sides of your vehicle. If you're using painter's tape for your race numbers, put the tape on your driver's and passenger's side door large enough so that they are visible from far away. Head to the registration table where you'll check in and get a wristband which is color coordinated to your run group. They'll give you your driver's information, including which instructor you're paired with and a schedule for the day. After you've cleaned out and prepared your car and checked in, grab your helmet and drive your car to tech inspection. Give the inspectors your tech sheet and open your hood, trunk, and doors. They'll look over your car and check the rating of your helmet. After you've successfully passed tech inspection, they'll put a sticker on your window that tells the track stewards that you're safe to go on track. In the morning driver's meeting, you'll get a wealth of information including everything from passing signals to flags being used to how to enter and exit pit lane. After the full driver's meeting, you'll probably have your first novice meeting where you'll meet your driving instructor. Look at the schedule and listen over the speaker system for when you should begin to stage your car. Close to your staging time, your driving instructor will come over and give you a communicator so that you can communicate even with all of the wind noise inside the car. Put on your helmet, get in the driver's seat, fasten your seatbelt, and set up your earpiece. Roll down your driver's and passenger side windows all the way, as that is required at all times on tracks, so that you can put your arm out of the window for hand signals. Be very respectful and appreciative of your driving instructor. They are generously sharing their expertise and time with you. If you listen intently to the advice they give you and try to implement the feedback they're sharing, you will become a safer and faster driver. Your instructor will help you learn the art of car control and will be able to help you shave seconds off your lap times over the course of just one day. Your first few laps of your first session, you're going to be behind a safety car. Oftentimes, the safety car will follow the racing line, so try to follow the line of the car in front of you as that may be the best car placement when running at full speed. Use this first lap out as your opportunity to find all of the corner stations. Your course map will show the locations of all the corner stations. These are elevated stands where a corner worker will be communicating with you visually. During your first lap, mentally look for every corner station and say the number of the corner out loud as you point them out. Corner workers are some of the unspoken heroes of track days. They volunteer to make sure you have a safe and fun time on track. Here are the flags that you may see a corner worker use when you're on track. A standing yellow flag may be displayed for the first two laps of a session to allow all drivers to warm up and find the flag stations. A waving yellow flag tells you that something has happened ahead of you that is on the track surface and may be in the way of the racing line. Slow down and be prepared to take evasive action. All other flags are displayed standing. A standing yellow flag also indicates that something has happened ahead of you but the incident is off the track surface. 
There is absolutely no passing under either yellow flag until you reach the next corner station that is no longer showing the yellow flag or showing the green flag. A green flag signals that the session has begun, but the track is clear. Passing is allowed. After your first few laps of session under full course yellow, you can begin to go full speed and pass at the site of the next flag stand where you either see a green flag or no more yellow flag being displayed. A striped red and yellow flag warns you that there is something on the surface of the track. It could be debris or parts from another car, dirt, oil, or even an animal. Passing is still allowed. Just be cognizant that there may be debris on the track that can hinder traction or cause damage. A red flag tells you that something has happened on the track and all cars must come to a complete stop. The first thing you need to do is check your mirrors and ensure that you begin to slow down you won't be rear-ended. Come to a gradual controlled stop on the right side of the track. If you can see that the incident nearby, pull off on the opposite side from where the crash is. Stop within sight of the next corner station so you can see when the corner worker signals the next flag. Keep in mind that the nearest corner station may be visible behind you and your mirrors rather than in front of you. Remain seated in your car with seatbelt fastened and await instruction from the corner workers. A black flag instructs you to enter the pits during that lap. Proceed down pit lane to the track steward who will tell you what the problem is. If you ignore a black flag, there are serious penalties, including loss of track time. If a black flag is being waved at all corner stations, then all vehicles must enter pit lane that lap. A black flag with an orange center, sometimes called the meatball, tells you that your car is showing mechanical issues, such as billowing smoke, dripping oil, or throwing sparks out of your brakes and that you need to enter the pit lane that lap. Pull up to the track steward at the end of pit road and they will tell you what's wrong with your car. A blue flag alerts you that a faster car is behind you, so get ready to give a point by in the next passing zone. Failure to point by drivers when you are shown a blue flag can result in getting black flagged. These previous three flags, black flags, meatball, and blue flags can all be used to point to a specific driver by the corner worker. If the corner worker points towards you with any of these flags, they are telling you that this flag applies to you and you need to respond to that specific flag accordingly. Take a glance at every corner station as you approach it. Corner workers will use these flags and body language to convey the urgency of the situation to you, such as a puddle of oil on the racing line or faster car rapidly closing on you. You need to see and respond to safety flags immediately. Finally, a checker flag indicates that the session is ending. Gradually slow down and allow your car to cool down. Enter pit lane and proceed to the paddock. Now let's go over how passing works on the track. In your morning driver's meeting, the organizers will show you where the passing zones are on the course map. Generally, passing is only allowed on straightaways. When they are pointing out these passing areas, take note of the corner stations closest to the beginning and end of these passing zones. Any overtaking must be fully completed within the boundaries of these passing zones. All passing on a track can only occur with a point by. A point by is a visual communication to another driver to signal that you are giving them the all clear to pass you. When giving a point by, you will stick your left arm out of the open driver's side window and point your index finger to which side of the car you want the approaching driver to pass you on. When you are giving them room to pass on your left, you will point your arm straight out the left side of your driver's window. If they should pass you on your right, raise your hand over the roof of your car and point your index finger to the right. If you see a blue passing flag directed at you, check your rearview mirror. When you see a faster car approaching in your rearview mirror, prepare to give the point by once you hit the next straightaway. Acknowledge that you are aware of the approaching driver with a wave inside of the car. Don't be intimidated by a faster car behind you. Keep your car in control 
you can let them pass in the next passing zone. Once you enter the passing zone, give the point by to the approaching driver. Lift off the throttle a bit so that you can give the other driver enough room to fully get around you before the braking zone begins and the end of the straightaway. After they have passed you, you can get back into the throttle. There is one car that can pass per each point by. So if you have multiple faster cars behind you, you need to give a point by for each car in order for them to pass you. There may be times where you give multiple point buys within one passing zone. The same rules apply when you are the faster car approaching a slower driver. You cannot pass them until they give you the point by. When you are approaching a slower car, anticipate that they will give you the point by on the next straightaway. As soon as they give you the point by, accelerate quickly so that you can pass them on the side that they point you on and get in front of them safely before the end of the passing zone. If a driver in front of you gives you a point by and you don't want to pass at that time, you can wave off the point by by waving your hands inside the front of your windshield. You'll pass cars on track and you'll probably be passed. Point buys and track protocols are a vital part of creating an ideal environment that allows each driver to be safe while pushing their various cars at the speed they're comfortable with. Your first track day is casual and fun. Don't be distraught if you are passed frequently. Be aware of other drivers on the track. Keep your eyes open. Check out the corner stations as you pass them. Be generous with your point buys and responsive when you're giving a point buy and you'll have a blast. Next, let's talk about how to get on and off of a hot track. If you're waiting in pit lane to enter a hot track, wait until the race steward signals you to go out. As soon as you exit pit lane, hug the blend line and watch your mirrors to be sure that you aren't getting in the way of a rapidly approaching car. Oftentimes, the pit exit is at the end of a straightaway, so cars already on track may be approaching their fastest speeds close to where you will be entering the course. The track steward will wait to signal you until there is a window for you to get back out before the next car approaches. You need to accelerate quickly and hug the blend line, which will keep you off the racing line until you are back up to speed so you aren't blocking any approaching drivers. Remember, this isn't a race. Whenever you exit the track, either during the checkered flag at the end of a session or in the middle of a session, you need to visually signal that you will be exiting the course one or two corners before the pit entrance. To do this, stick your left arm upwards out of the driver's side window and show a closed fist. This will tell the corner workers and other drivers that you are exiting the track this lap. Showing a fist out of the window, indicating that you are entering pit lane soon, is also a passing signal so anticipate that drivers may pass you in the passing zones. You should stay out of their way by hugging the side of the track opposite of the racing line. Unlike point buys, where you have to give one per passing car, when you show a fist, multiple drivers can pass you within passing zones. You don't need to move your fist at all, simply keep it held straight up. If you see a driver with their fist out of the window and it isn't the end of a session, know that they will be exiting the track soon and that you can pass them, but still only within the passing zones. Since they are probably slowing down to enter pit lane, give them a wide berth and stay to the opposite side of the track, which should still let you maintain the racing line. Your driving instructor will help you find the limits of your car and ensure that you keep all four wheels firmly planted on the asphalt at all times. Your car is your trophy. Getting you and your car home unscathed is priority number one. We all want to go fast, but don't overestimate you or your car's limits. In the event that you do go off track, bring the car to a complete stop and remain in the vehicle at all times, unless the car is literally on fire. Do not get out of your car unless you see smoke, as the track is still hot and the safest place for you is buckled up inside of your car. It's highly likely that whatever may have caused you to go off track may cause the next driver to do so as well. If your car cannot move, a corner worker will be with you shortly to help. If your car can move, ask your instructor how to proceed and both of you will look at the track to see when there's an open window for you to get back on track between cars. Anytime your car goes off the pavement, 
you need to exit the track during that lap and enter pit lane, even if you didn't hit anything. A few corners before the pit entrance, stick your left arm upwards out of your open driver's side window and show a fist signal that you are leaving the course. Once in pit lane, pull your car straight towards the end of pit lane where the track steward will be waiting. Tell them that you just went off course and they will look over your car to see if there's any damage. They'll check to see if your car appears to be safe and if it does, they'll tell you that you're good to go back on track. They will signal you to re-enter the track when there's a safe window between approaching cars. When they signal you, exit pit lane and hug the blend line while accelerating. Once you're back up to speed, you can finish your session. At the end of every session, you will see checkered flags signaling that this is the last lap. Use your last lap as a cool down to avoid heat soak. Don't slow down to parade speed, but keep your speed below 75%. There is no passing under a checkered flag. Let off the throttle and approach pit lane at a safe speed. You and the other drivers should hold your left arm up in the fist signal since you will all be exiting the track that lap. Once you're back in the paddock after your track session, head to your parking spot and stop your car. Do not set your parking brake after a track session. Your brakes are going to be very hot and you can fuse the pad to the rotor if you set the parking brake. Instead, simply put your car in park, or if you are in a manual transmission car, shut off the engine and put it in gear. Your driving instructor will give you some tips about how to improve for the next session. This is a good time to pull out your course map and your instructor will point out areas where you can be faster. They will talk about weight management and how application of brake, throttle, and steering shifts your car's weight distribution and thus how it handles. Your instructor may use some terms you haven't heard before, such as open the wheel, track out, maintenance throttle, or threshold braking. Don't hesitate to ask them for clarification if they say a term you're unfamiliar with. Take off your helmet and open the hood of your car so your engine can cool before the next session. Grab your tire pressure gauge and check your tire pressures while they are still hot. The condition and pressures of your tires after a session on track tell you a lot about what is happening with your car. Talk with your instructor to see if any adjustments are needed to your pressures before the next session. You'll want to make sure you have close to the same tire pressures in all four wheels. After your first track session, you will have another novice meeting in the classroom or meeting area where you met earlier. Feel free to ask questions about anything from passing to recommendations on the racing line on track. After your meeting, use the time remaining before your next session to check over your car to make sure everything is still in optimal functioning condition. Inspect your tires and tell your instructor if you see any significant wear. Relax in your chair, chat with some other drivers, and drink plenty of water. So you just finished your last session. Congrats! You dominated the track and made it back with your car in one piece. After your last session, park your car in your spot, remembering not to set the parking brake. Thank your instructor for all of their help and ask for their contact info so you can keep in touch. The teacher-student relationship and friendship you forged on track at your first event can be very helpful and you'll likely see your instructor again as you keep going to track events. I actually race with my first instructor now. Pop your hood and take your time loading everything back into your car so that your vehicle has some time to cool down before you drive home. Remember to put things that you took out of the cabin, such as garage door openers and toll transponders, back into the car. You likely let some air out of your tires at the start of the track day, so you'll need to reinflate them before you drive home since you'll be back on the street. Use your portable tire inflator to reinflate all four tires back to normal street PSI. Turn on your car's engine when you're using your tire inflator so you don't drain the battery. Once you're all packed up, head home where you can tell everyone about your epic day racing around on track and start dreaming about your next track day. We all got hooked on going fast after our first track day, 
Once you experience the fun and sheer adrenaline of your first day on track, you'll want to come back for more. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that this has given you some helpful insight and made you want to experience the incredible feeling of driving on a racetrack even more. At Track Shaker, we're all about supporting drivers, and we'd love to hear about your first track event. Every week, we feature people who drive their cars on track on our social media pages. So once you complete your first high-performance driving event, we'd love to share your pictures of you taking on the track in your car on our pages. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at TrackShaker. If this video helps you, please like and subscribe. And if you know anyone that would like to be a badass like you and drive their car on a racetrack, please share this video with them. You and your friends can experience the incredible rush and fun of pushing your limits on a racetrack this week. It's never been easier. Go to TrackShaker.com for everything you need to start your journey of going fast. And get out there and shake up the track. Thanks again for watching, and now stay tuned to ride along with Track Shaker driving instructor Jim Nova as he dominates Carolina Motorsports Park in his BMW M4. We'll see you on track soon.